You're listening to WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. Opinions expressed are those of the show's host, not WPSL or WSTU or EXP Realty. Any reproduction or reuse of this program without written consent of WPSL and WSTU is strictly prohibited. And now, welcome to my dream home radio show with Eileen Simons and Paul Brady. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Good. Happy Good. Morning to everyone. I'm surprised. Can you see us uh, through all these toys? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I think it's, it's wonderful. Open some of them up and it's all right. get them. That's all right. <laughs> as many kids as you have to take care of. You call it WPSL Christmas Kids, right? That is correct. Yeah. And as many kids as you have to take care of. We have to start collecting now. There you go. Exactly. A thousand a year. A uh, thousand uh, a year through uh, community services, St. Lucie County, and uh, our Christmas in July baseball game, courtesy of the St. Lucie Mets, for the 25th year. That was awesome. very successful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, despite yeah. the weather, it was <laughs> it was great. It was great. It yeah. only rained in Stewart. It didn't rain in Port St. Lucie, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Well, if for some reason our guest gets a little dull, you can uh, play with the uh, Play-Doh say. or something. Yeah, oh, but... oh, look at Mark. <laughs> Uh oh, oh look how he has. Oh, oh no. You wait. got a snowman with you. Hey, wait a minute. Mark, what is that? You're in the wrong got? state for that. Yeah. That's my uh, snowman. Last time I talked to you. Oh, oh he's here we go. Oh, really? Oh, wait, oh. Hey, can you hear me now? We got you. We got you. Yeah. Well, last time I was on back in March and we were talking about snow in Tallahassee and Missing the snow, so I got myself a snowman. No, oh, we've got a snowman on Mark. I love it. Perfect. Yeah. Whoa. That's <laughs> I love it. This snowman. Oh boy. I, I should have changed my background to a blizzard, but I, I oh no, know. I love the butterflies. <laughs> how am, how do you do that? I mean, that's a great animation program. Yeah, it's um well actually Zoom allows you to pick. Uh, either a still picture or video. And uh, I was doing a CE class with one of the board of realtors and the lady had the ocean and, and the waves of the ocean was a, was the oh, video cool. behind her. And I was laughing because she walked away from the computer and she started walking back to the computer and I said, stop. She's like, what? Because she was far enough away from the video. It looked like she was walking on water. I'm like, you're walking on water. Oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> I can't grab the butterflies, but yeah, oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh, well, your so snowman's cool. gonna melt if you keep him in, out too long. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he, he stopped. I think he's gonna be okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's, that's wonderful. Good. That's a reminder that uh, where did I read this weekend? Someplace in Africa got snow this week or last week. Wow. wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it's crazy. Oh, that's yeah. So there can be a snowman. Any place at any time, I guess. I guess. There you go. <laughs> That's there interesting. There you go. Wow. That's amazing. I wouldn't have expected that for sure. So what's going on, ladies? So I want to um, put an invitation out there to anyone who wants to call the show today because we are a call-in show. So if you have real estate questions you want to ask us, 772-340-1590. That's the phone number here at the radio station. And we're happy to talk to you about your real estate questions. And um, so that we don't delay, I know that Mark has a super busy schedule, and we are so appreciative that you are here today with us. This is Mark Pease. He is the business development manager for Florida Housing Finance Corporation. So thank you so much for being with us this morning, Mark. We really appreciate your time. Now I appreciate you inviting me. Uh, I had a great time uh, last time in March. Matter of fact, I listened to the broadcast again. I'm like, man, I was talking in lots. So, <laughs> that's good. Uh, well, that's what we want you to yeah. do. We want everybody yeah. to everybody listening to know about the programs available through Florida, and so that's why we invited you back again. Well, five five months later, I'm in Tallahassee. Uh, we are still working from a home, so if you 
see my cat jump on the computer here and uh, wanting to uh, get attention. That's that's what's going on here. Um, okay. You're still then, working from home, huh? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. But that's and, not so uh, bad, is it? No, we're you know most of what I do is online. A lot of online training and interactions and so forth. So. Uh, it, it's it's weird, you know, when you're going uh, used to go into the office for, you know, how many years and all of a sudden uh, you wake up and you, you go downstairs. And I have a two story and I get a cup of coffee or tea and make yourself breakfast and turn the computer on your set. Yeah, uh, back no commuting. <laughs> yeah, back in the 90s, I was self-employed. And um, as, as an appraiser, I told you guys last time, I'm a real estate broker and next door, our neighbor across the street from me he worked from home. I'm like, how do you do it? Cause like I'm sitting at my desk and, and I'm looking out the window, like, Oh, it looks like the grass needs cut. Even though I just cut it four days ago, you know, <laughs> you, you get distracted. Oh, the dishes need to be done. But uh, this gentleman would go ahead, uh, get dressed in the morning. He would drive to the local uh, convenience store, get a cup of coffee as if he was driving to work and went back home and started to work. And at the end of the day, he would leave, go again out <laughs> like he was leaving, for, leaving from work and and buy go to the grocery store come back home so it's it's all it's all getting used to it and dealing with it and, and like i said not get distracted by the the cat or the grass that needs to be cut but uh it's uh it, it is more productive i i think um uh they've been doing uh, across the the nation as far as those who are working from home the productivity has actually gone up uh, as far as i go so uh well, it's just like people a, get used to it yes they probably yeah. you know can become more efficient with their time that way Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, have you not, saved have you saved any money on gas at all? Absolutely. And 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 stress. I mean, uh <laughs> time to work. No Tallahassee's time. not like your area, not like Orlando and so forth, but uh, you know, it's 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 more it's it's more relaxing as far as that goes. And uh, you know, Florida Housing's a great company to work for and, and I have a great boss. So it's uh no, I'm not just saying that, but uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a great company and it's the fact that we have this opportunity. I mean, there's those out there that don't, you know, those that are working in the hospitals and, you know, the front lines and everything else. So, um, you know, our appreciation to them always, as far yeah. as that goes. Absolutely. Yes. But, yeah. But more importantly, how are you guys doing? I, I heard um, about someone seeing their favorite car, uh, a Porsche. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was last week. That blue Porsche yeah. that I blue Porsche Carrera that I got to follow up here to the radio station last week. Oh, made my heart pound. <laughs> yeah. And I'm totally diverse from real estate. But uh, when I was at the Disney credit union, we had a car sale going on for the weekend there and the dealership had brought some uh, car, basically cars to the lot and I got to be really friendly with them. And I said, like, do you mind if I do a favor? And I like, what, can I drive that Porsche home? And I, <laughs> and I texted my wife. I said, come on outside. She's holding my two kids. And I told her I traded in the minivan for the Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> I left the minivan at work. It was one of those things that you didn't have the videos on the camera at the time. And yeah. I wish I had to look on her face. Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> she, was, she probably she was not happy. Bags, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> anyway. Good. I thought, well, she didn't get in, but what about the kids? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, everybody's got their their thing that they like and and are envious of. And I cars are not for me, but pools. Show me a beautiful pool, and I'm I'm like green. <laughs> you know, I, green I with like, envy. Yeah, right? green with envy for sure. <laughs> and hopefully not a green pool. No, 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 not no, a green no, pool. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> I was just, okay, I just you know just checking. Yeah. No. <laughs> I go into a house and see a gorgeous pool, and I'm like, "Oh, I've got to check this out." <laughs> Everybody's got to search. Yeah, got to search online. There's a video of an infinity pool in Switzerland where they're sitting at the no edge pools, and the mountains are behind them. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, Just that's got to be gorgeous. Makes you want to move. Oh, yeah. you have to look online now. I am. I'm going to have yeah. to check that out. <laughs> Well, anyway, there's a lot going on here in the state of Florida as far as uh, housing and, and especially Florida housing and, and down payment assistance and so forth. Uh, what I wanted to start off with is um, uh, really the, 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 the CARE Act that was passed of March of last year and the forbearance provision of that CARE Act uh, allowed a lot of homeowners who were being negatively impacted by uh, COVID to uh, request the forbearance, which basically, basically means they were requesting not to make payments or put a hold on the payments. And um, so that was originally six months extended for another six months, which was part of the original CARE Act that the homeowner can 
uh, you know, put a pause on the payment for six months and request another six months. And uh, then it was extended another three months and actually was supposed to expire on June uh, 30th. And it was extended again until the end of September. Uh, but the state of Florida is going to be receiving some funds. It's called the Homeowner Assistance Fund or HAF. Uh, and then these funds, and right now it's 676 million. It'll, you know, probably goes up or down depending on as everything gets allocated. Uh, but this is going to be handled by the Department of Economic Opportunity. Uh, and so the Department of Economic Opportunity basically had to submit their plan to the U.S. Treasury. Uh, so right now the program is under development, but I'm pretty sure they're trying to get everything set by September 30th. But anybody who is uh, having, you know, issues with making the mortgage payment and the rent uh, should reach out to the following phone number, which is 833 987 8997 again 833 987 8997 or they can go to florida floridajobs.org forward slash h as in a happy a as an apple as as f as in frank which really stands for homeowner assistant fund so floridajobs.org forward slash h a f and so there's no funds yet but the program's getting together they can go to the website, sign on to an email list. They'll get notified when everything's up and running. Uh, but those are going to be funds to help the, those individuals out that are struggling right now. Uh, and it's you know for us to make sure that everyone knows it's a different department handling the, these funds uh, because we will we will get the calls. But uh, just oh to yeah, put out sure. yeah and that's great can. that they can go and basically get on a list now, even though funds aren't available, right? Correct. And uh, so, you know, they're working on the whole program application and so forth. But, uh, you know, uh, the D Department of Economic Opportunities is the one that's going to be handling that, those funds uh, as they get solidified. OK, um, and we'll make sure that we give that again before you leave today. Sure, absolutely. And then uh, other news, since I've seen you guys uh, in March, uh, we have uh, for one of our three down payment assistance. This is called our Florida Assist down payment assistance. If you get a FHA, VA, or USDA mortgage with Florida Housing, uh, you'll get $10,000 in down payment assistance uh, uh, prior to, um, uh, actually this was June 1st, uh, it was $7,500. So I was going to say that went up, didn't it? Yep, yep. Uh, increased uh, just for the FHA, VA, and the USDA uh, government loans. But um, a, a reminder, Florida Housing, just uh, let you know who I am or who we are, excuse me. Uh, Florida Housing is the state housing finance agency. And if you're in need of down payment assistance, there's actually three levels of down payment assistance. You have your city programs, uh, your county programs, and then you have the state program. If you've heard anybody say there's no funds available, they're probably talking about the county program or city program. Uh, Florida Housing, we are fully funded 365 days, 24 seven, as far as that goes. So any, um, Anybody out there who's not in the know uh, will will say, oh, they're out of funds, and, and we are not. We're not out of funds. Uh, and then the local city and county uh, should be receiving their SHIP funds here. Uh, we go by rumors as far as that goes, but which trickled down is probably within the next 60 days. I believe um, Indian River County, I thought I had saw online uh, within the last 30 days, had posted uh, that they were starting to take applications as far as that goes. And it is uh, truly um, the funds that are limited and uh, first come first serve as far as that goes. So uh, you might want anybody looking for down payment assistance. If you're looking at the city county level, you're going to want to reach out to those programs. And um, prior to the to the program here, I emailed you guys the contact list for um, St. Lucie, Martin, Okeechobee and Indian River County as far as the programs and the phone numbers that were available okay. uh, for those areas. Oh, great. Thank so you. we can send those out to anybody that wants them. Yes. Correct. And also um, through Florida Housing, in order to receive our funds and actually also on the county and city level, uh, we have uh, lenders. We have over 260 lenders that are approved with our program throughout the state of Florida. And then we have the loan officers who uh, work for those lenders. They have to do some training. Uh, and so I did send a list of loan officers in your area that are have uh, completed that training that are available and the counties and also the cities, <clears throat> excuse me, also uh, have uh, approved loan officers or lenders that you as a buyer would have to go through. The city and county uh, does have training, so you'll do home buyer education through them, and they usually provide you that list if it's not on their website 
uh, at that particular time. But um, uh, it's been a, a good year for us here at Florida Housing. So we've had a, an increase of 105%. Uh, of our program, of course, we were we were you know negatively impacted uh, by COVID. A lot of things, everybody came to a standstill. So, uh, and then we've also seen an increase of loans uh, from this time last year of about eighty one percent. So oh, uh, things great. are hop things are hopping, yeah. uh, and of course, you guys are seeing the same thing we are. So the average purchase price has gone up by fifteen percent. Um, we keep track of purchase price and obviously the loan amounts. And that's gone up across 15% wow. in the state of Florida. And then uh, the uh, dollar amount of our average down payment assistance provided uh, was uh, $9,054. Um, uh, and basically that's a, a, an increase, uh, and mainly because we were doing a Hurricane Michael program up in the Panhandle, uh, which was devastated by Hurricane Michael. So that's been uh, um, a great program. Uh, we've helped over a thousand families uh, purchase uh, homes or receive down payment assistance. So imagine you had your home, uh, it was destroyed. Uh, maybe you didn't have any equity in the property and they still own the property, but the program allowed buyers to uh, own a home and uh, get down payment assistance. So that's not the traditional uh, program, but just let you know what we've done at Florida Housing. Uh, we received uh, we used 5 million of our own money and then the state gave us another $10 million because they were impressed with what we were able to get done. But a thousand families in the area benefit from that, and a um, lot of great stories of those uh, who were struggling and so forth uh, in the panhandle. Wow, that's well, that's fabulous. excellent to hear. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, Mark, just so that everybody understands, uh, from what from what I understand, this is not just a first time home buyer program. Is that correct? Or I should say one of the there are programs that are available for others than first time home buyers, correct? Well, yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of programs out there for, from a lot of lenders as far as that goes. We are, you know, you I hate to use the word a niche product, but uh, we are a product that's available for first time home buyers. And we have to follow the IRS definition of a first time home buyer. And that's also with the local city and county program. So three years, example, right? <clears throat> three years. So they can own a home currently. They just cannot have lived in that home at any time as their primary residence in the past three years. Uh, the example uh, I gave last time, the same one I'll give you is, uh, um, let's just say uh, husband and wife. Wife was previously married. Uh, she got a town home in the divorce. She's had the town home rented in the past four years. She hasn't lived in that home as her primary residence. She would count as a first time home buyer. Uh, you could have a, uh, a buyer right now that owns a mobile home. As long as that mobile home is on a rented lot, like a mobile home park or rented land, the right. IRS considers them a first time home buyer as far as that goes. Uh, if you're a veteran, uh, you have a permanent exemption for a first time home buyer, you can currently own a home uh, and then also obtain down payment assistance to purchase a second home. But uh, no matter what the situation, the buyer cannot own more than two homes including the home they're purchasing at the time of closing. So if you're a, um, an investor out there that's got five rental properties and you haven't lived in any of those rental properties for the past three years, you would not uh, be approved because you cannot own more than two homes at the time of closing. And that, that really is like for the veteran. Uh, let's say the veteran has a VA mortgage now and they want to upgrade uh, their house or get to a bigger house. They could keep that first house uh, and then use the down payment assistance to purchase another home. Uh, again, not owning more to, more than two homes at the time of closing. And then also there are some uh, federally, des federally designated targeted areas throughout, throughout the state of Florida. Uh, if you currently own a home, uh, unfortunately, I, I, as a, a former broker, there's always a situation where uh, the seller, you know, when you go to take the list in, you ask the seller, hey, do you have any liens against the property? And they go, oh, I have a first mortgage. Uh, but they forget to tell you about IRS tax liens or judgments and everything else that's out there. And so as a listing agent, you go, oh, you're going to walk out with $10,000. And, uh, and they're thinking, okay, I'm going to take the $10,000 to buy another home. And then they forget to mention about the IRS tax liens. And they're basically, they're walking out with nothing. And I, I've seen, seen that happen. Well, in this scenario, if you purchase a home in a federally designated target area, even though you've owned a home in the last three years, you could also qualify for down payment assistance. So uh, there are some a little exceptions to the rules. Uh, the IRS uh, has that set up in their definition. 
Uh, and so there are different programs that are out there in that regards. And so on the Treasure Coast, are there any of those federally designated areas? Uh, I would uh, send you the map. I, I think the last time you attended the class, um, we with the census tract oh, areas. A while like, ago. Yeah, it's, it, there's like over 200 of them. And uh, so in July of last year on a Friday, I, I got bored for lack of better words, but <laughs> like, how, what can I do to help the realtors out? And I took all 200 census tract areas and I mapped it out and I would be glad to send you that map here oh, once we're done with that. That would be wonderful. Yeah, thank yeah. you. It took me nine hours and my eyes were crossed. Ah. <laughs> Everybody's thanked me for doing it. So but, you are uh, such a good person to know. <laughs> that is awesome. You got friends in low places, right? <laughs> well, I was um, so impressed by your class that I sat in on, and that's probably been two years ago now that um, that's why I reached out to you the first time to come onto the show, because I was so impressed with the information that you gave us through that webinar. I appreciate the feedback. And we've been getting good reviews. And I know most of the people listening to you, you know, are, are not realtors as far as that goes. But, um, you know, we have across the industry, whether it's the mortgages or the realtors, ladies and gentlemen, there's plenty of information out there. Don't go it alone. You know, look to the experts that you have, especially these ladies here who have taken the time to put the show together. You know, all the hard work they do behind to get the guests and so forth. And and you really want to reach out to these type of individuals who feel that are like family members to you that will do anything for you. And if like I've said during the classes, if you're not comfortable with who you're working with, there are other lenders and other realtors as far as it goes. But uh, I've paid attention to your guys' broadcasts and so forth. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty impressed. And 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 your area should be thankful that you got ladies are doing this and trying to provide the information because it is the largest transaction you will have in your life. And you, you yeah. want to do it alone and, and you don't want the advice and you should be seeking the advice before you start to look to buy a home. <laughs> uh, the worst case I can tell you as a, as a mortgage manager for 19 years was the buyer that came in and said, oh, I signed this contract. Well, did you get pre-qualified? No, I didn't. So, you, you know, you wasted all this time and energy, you know, to look for houses, shopping for houses and so forth. And and you weren't pre-qualified, or maybe you you uh, pre-qualified was you just did an application online. That's not the pre-approval. No, you know you have to do the application. You got to turn in your documentation uh, to support. I could tell you where someone says, "Oh, I make sixty thousand dollars on the application," and they turn in their pay stubs and they made thirty. And so you know you, you, the pre-qual says, "Hey, you're approved," but when you get the documentation in, then then you find out they're not approved, and and you just don't want to put yourself in the situation. Uh, uh, I used to teach a home buyer workshop class and I would tell the buyers, I said, let's go right now. Let's go look at cars, you know, but let's start, let's start with the, you know, a, a Porsche, you know, I have Porsche dreams, but I can only handle a Hyundai payment, yeah. you know, so, you know, <laughs> there you, you, go. Really need, yeah, you need to know what you qualify for before you step out and even look into the houses and, and uh, even the home buyer workshop class, I'm like, don't do it. Just don't do it to yourself. Get yourself. We've turned everything in. Uh, you, you're talking to the experts and, and so forth and getting yourself set to go. But And making uh, a great plan that way. Exactly. You know, absolutely. set yourself up for success, not failure. That's the way I tell them. Ab absolutely. And you may have like, you know, for example, hey, I just got married and we want to buy a home in five years from now. You can start now. You can start sure. laying things out. Uh, and the one, the one catchphrase I used to tell everybody, I said, well, if, if today's the first day you want to buy a house and they're in the CE class or the, the home buyer workshop class I'm teaching, I'm like, starting today until the day after you close, every dollar you make, you either save it or you pay off a bill. You know, if you do that, you'll be in great position for down payment. You'll be in great position because the, the more debt you have, it negatively impacts the amount you can afford. Mm -hmm. So paying uh, bills off, being debt free uh, is a positive thing. Um, you know, if you, if you're old as I am, your parents or grandparents told you pay cash for everything. And if you don't have the cash, you don't buy it, you know, as far as that goes. And we are, we are a society today of need to have it now. I need to have my text message while I'm driving the road, even though I'm doing 60 or 70 miles per hour. Don't pay attention to driving, pay attention to that important message. It's the same thing. Um, back in the old days, the 1970s, when they used to have you, you, you went to the car, uh, excuse me, tire place and you need to get a set of tires. They found out that they would give you 90 days, same as cash. And uh, I, during the home buyer workshop class, I'd say, you know, if you looked at the percentage of people who got 90 days, same as cash back in the seventies, they found out 
uh, they didn't pay that off in 90 days. And what happened that 90 days you had same as cash, all the interest and at the time was 22 to 30% of interest would be added onto that loan at day 91. Mm -hmm. Then they extended the six months, same as cash and nine months, same as cash, and then a year and then two years. And now they have three years, yeah. you know, same as cash because people don't pay it off. And, um, you know, if you, this, the statement being is save the money, if you cannot pay cash, don't buy it. And if you do that, uh, I think you'll have a very successful life. That's, that's my personal opinion. Much less um, stress. Much less stress is right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Florida housing, uh, just to uh, give you guys some more information, maybe because maybe last time we talked, uh, we had a, a change of the uh, area median income uh, comes out in June of every year. Uh, so we did have a change. Just want to let you know. So for um, St. Lucie County, if you make less than $100,100, we have down payment assistance available to you. That's one of our programs. It's called our Florida Plus and Florida Help Down Payment That's Assistance. Amazing. And then... Um, you know, a lot of people get confused uh, with the word bond. Uh, so all housing, housing finance agencies, in order to be able to provide mortgage loans, they will issue a mortgage revenue bond. And so they uh, sell the mortgage revenue bond to the investors on the secondary market to raise the funds uh, to lend out. And then the le they would lend the money out. So we have a bond program. That's our FHA and USDA, uh, the income limit for St. Lucie uh, County one to two people is $82,225. And then for three plus people is $85,800. And um, I'll, I'll send you the income limits for Martin Indian River and Okeechobee, but they're pretty close to the same. Matter of fact, uh, Okeechobee on our Florida Plus and Florida Help, the highest income limits is slightly low. It's at $98,000. Mm. Um, so, uh, and then uh, the Florida Plus and the Florida Help Down Payment Assistance is all called our TBA mortgage. Uh, TBA is the, bo it's the bond alternative. So we have bond loans and we have non-bond loans. And that's our TBA product. Uh, so um, the $100,000, $100 has some flexibility. Uh, so if you and your uh, uh, spouse or co-borrow on the loan uh, make more than $100,000, $100, it is possible for that loan officer to remove one of the bars in order to get them lower than that limit. So we just remove one of the bars to be able to qualify for the program. Um, but you're you going to reach by borrowers to qualify, but you can still use their income to qualify too. I um, can't use the income would have to remove the income and the bar off that program. Okay. So uh, right now you like, for example, if, if, if you apply for a loan with somebody else and let's just say it's a husband and wife, the husband's credit score is 540 and the wife's score is 720, the loan officer will probably say, you know what, we have to remove the husband off the loan because we're not going to get approval with that with the husband. So they remove the husband off, but they, they can't count as income in the program and they have to qualify for a mortgage based on that income. So it's kind of the same scenario. We would remove one of the two bars off of there. The loan officer will uh, to get you below those income limits, but you only use that income that's remaining to qualify. Uh, as far as I care. So there's there's some flexibility when I say the word, you know, say $100,000, $100. You may have somebody that makes $1,500 go, I don't qualify. Well, again, uh, it's possible to, re to remove a bar as far as I care. But yeah, you know, again, this is where you spend the time with the loan officer that looks at all the different programs uh, that you have available. I know you had a, a, a you know mortgage broker last week and all the programs they have available. So we're just, you know, we're one tool in the loan officer's tool belt. Uh, as far as that goes. And if you if you walk in early and talk to your loan officer, they can find the right tool for you. And again, give you the guidance that you need as far as a buyer to, to, to do what you need to do to get approved. So uh, I always told the buyers, I never used the word you're denied. I always said, I can't help you today, but here's what you need to do to right. get approved. If you um, do this, then you will be able to be approved. Correct. Yeah. So then they have a plan. They at least know where to start. So that's awesome. All right. Very good. Um, wow. Uh, Informative as always. Yeah. Right? Yes, he really is. Wow. <laughs> it's it's amazing. That's and uh, if if anybody's a veteran out there, we do still have our Salutor Soldiers program. So actually, um, when I saw you guys in March, it was the one year anniversary of our Salutor Soldiers programs. Uh, so as of July thirteenth, uh, we have. Uh, provided 618 veterans uh, down payment assistance uh, throughout wow. the state of Florida, uh, and so it's been it's been a great program. And 
Uh, and really, again, if you're a veteran on behalf of Florida House and my family, thank you for your service. But please make sure that you're reaching out to your realtor, your loan officer, and ask about the Salute Our Soldiers programs. Uh, we actually have had 100 uh, uh, veterans uh, use this program and that did not need down payment assistance. And because they're able to come in and get the interest rate or low interest rate, uh, the rate today was 2.5% for the veteran on an FHA, VA, or USDA loan, even if they don't need the down payment assistance. And so some of the loan officers out there, they can't get that uh, rate. And so they're bringing the, the veteran in just for the first mortgage, even though they don't need the down payment assistance. And that doesn't take any funds away from anybody else that needs the program. So don't think that, you know, somebody else is losing out They're They're able to get this program. So uh, okay. if you have a veteran, you know, please make sure that you're, you're having uh, the lender loan officer check out. And if your lender that you're working with now is not approved with Florida House, and they can reach me at, uh, you know, at uh, 850-488-4197. I'm the only market Florida House in, and I'll be glad to give them information what they need to do to get approved. Yeah, and I did pass along your information to a lender last week. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Mark, uh, you hear so much on like CNBC and some in Bloomberg about uh, inflation. Um, and you just mentioned a 2% interest rate. That has not affected uh, home interest rates yet? Uh, it, no, it's it's not. And it all follows the bond market. So uh, the, I saw last week there was a lot of um, in investors that were purchasing bonds. So the rates actually went down a little bit last week uh, as that far as I guess. Yeah, and, but I, I can tell you, I haven't been around for a long time. You know, we have had, um, or excuse me, in the CE class, I talk about the 1990s. And in the 1990s, uh, when I was an appraiser, you would see in, in Orlando, there's a, a town called Sanford. It's in the northeast of Orlando. And they used to use bond money to get buyers to purchase in certain parts of town because they wanted to see the development in that area. So you would see a new home subdivision sign. And on there would be a little call out like in yellow and say, bond money available for this subdivision, the interest rate was 6%. And, and I remember seeing the sign like it's right in front of me and I wish I'd taken a picture of it because you know rates back then in, in the 90s were at 8% and 6% was a great rate. Yeah. And oh, yeah. so you, you know, we've had the longest sustained low interest rates. Uh, you know, every, every year, the, the prediction, the rates are gonna go up and they haven't gone up and, 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 and the purchase of the bonds and so forth has brought the rates down. So. Uh, but the positive, the, there's two things going on right now. Um, and uh, actually, I'm not going to take credit for this. There's a, a, a class that I attended, and the speaker looked at the birth rate uh, uh, for the for every generation and the number of births that were that had happened that year. And so the average buyer uh, in 2020 was 33 years old. And if you look at the graph uh, of the of the births going on, the number of individuals uh, who are going to be reaching that age of 33 over the next 15, 20 years is greater than it is today. So when you talk about supply and demand, which really drives the marketplace, the demand hasn't even reached the peak when you're looking at the next 15, 20 years, the number of buyers, uh, the, the millennials and the, and the generation after that, uh, that are in the reaching the age of buying a home, there's going to be more buyers. And so uh, the only other thing that was positive was like in the last two weeks, uh, finally, I think some of the baby boomers or the silent generation going, you know what, now's the time to sell. And so you, we see more houses coming to the market, not as much as we want. It's still a shortage as far as that goes, but uh, it is always a supply and demand. And then the interest rates through the Mortgage Bankers Association, you know, and, and I, I'm telling you, I've stared at this thing for, for years now. They always predicted to go up, but the, the funny part was, even they were predicting rise in interest rates, the number of existing home sales that they predict is still going to go up, and the number of home construction sales is continue to go up. So, you know, the pandemic was a bad thing, and the fact that it halted the production of homes, uh, as far as that goes, and of course, a lot of people don't want to move and just put a pause on everything, but the demand is still there, and, and you're seeing it. Uh, with also rising prices of inflation, because uh, I, I think um, I'm trying to remember what I went into. Uh, actually, I went to uh, drove down to Orlando to see my 90 year old mom, and I stopped at Wawa, which I grew up in Philadelphia. Wawa is a 
is a gas convenience store station and they have these really good cheesesteaks. And I went in there and they didn't have cheesesteaks because they can't get the meat for the cheesesteak because of the demand oh, exceeds wow. the supply. Yes. Uh, so mm-hmm. instead of raising the rates, they just don't have the product. So everybody, we're seeing it in the shelves still and inflation will do that. And and uh, there's a, you know, the talk of that, the rise of housing obviously impacts inflation and how it trickles on down. So, you know, inflation, uh, some people we're not going to say we're not going to say it. Some people we are, but um, you know, as far as buying a home and so forth, uh, it is always a good time to buy a home. Uh, but you've got to plan accordingly for that. And again, the down payment assistance programs that are available that are out there to help those uh, that just can't save. Um, and I think um, uh, Eileen, last class you attended, I told you the average credit score was 703. Uh, so uh, last year the credit scores went up to 709. So those that are looking to buy a home in our program, the scores went up. Doesn't mean that um, you know you have to have a 709 score to get uh, to get approved. The, the minimum credit score we require is 640, uh, as far as that goes. But just to let you know that um, those are looking to buy, uh, you know, are paying their bills and so forth. They just don't have that silver spoon where they get the money that's available for the down payment, which is the reason they use our program. But there's again, the USDA does 100% financing, veterans, VAs does 100%, Fannie, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, 3% down, FHA, 3.5% down as far as that goes. But um, if you work with your loan officer and your realtor, they can help you get started in that way. Hey, yes. Mark, uh, just a thought, you know, with real estate, go, uh, white hat, um, you know, in 10 years, you and I can visit uh, Paula and Eileen in their beachfront mansions. <laughs> Uh, right. <laughs> I doubt that. Well, sure. I, I want to. My money doesn't go into that. So. Uh, uh, and up here in the Panhandle, you know, the house and even the beachfront house and even the rental rates are going up uh, in the yes, area. But, they um, are. Yeah. But I, I, Eileen, I did send you, uh, and I found this online yesterday. Uh, it was from the 1950s, August 1st of 1951s. Uh, and it was Pompano Beach Highland Subdivision. Uh, where you could go ahead and purchase a home for forty five hundred dollars. Wow! Uh, it, it, I, I sent you the article, so you'll be able to to, to share it later. But uh, I was I was laughing when I saw it because I looked up the subdivision and those homes that were selling for forty five hundred to sixty seven hundred dollars in nineteen fifty one are now going for two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yes! Wow. Look at all that Whoa. equity. That's yeah. how long it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I remember my parents at one point telling me that the first house they bought, they, uh, you know, of course, mortgaged for, but it was like $2,300. And that, you know, that was for us to be able, because we lived in a four flat um, that a family member had owned. And so I was six years old when they were finally able to buy their own home, $2,300. Wow. That's well, amazing. my dad in San Diego uh, just got out of the service and $4,500 for a little, little uh, bungalow in uh, Pacific beach, yep. which sold for a million. Wow. Isn't <laughs> just, that amazing? Just a year Depends ago. on where you buy. <laughs> there you go. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Right. Oh, man. And that was what? A one bedroom home? Or something like yeah. That? That's oh, amazing. Man, that's crazy. And, uh, I'll, I'll add one more statement to remind everybody that as of September 1st of 2020, we also have down payment assistance for manufacturer and mobile housing. So if that is out there, uh, the local city and counties don't offer the program with their uh, down payment assistance, but but we do. Uh, we've done everything we've done everything we can or continue to do everything we can to remind the loan officers and realtors that the program's out there and I still get calls from lenders and realtors who say oh you don't have down payment assistance for modular mobile homes and we do so if they say no uh, have them call Mark at Florida Housing and get them the only one that's a mark here at Florida Housing and I'll be glad to provide them the data that they need and the guidelines they need as far as that goes and does that manufactured or um manuf yeah anyway do those have to go on owned lots yes so it's uh, it would be have to be mobile home and land uh combined so it's not um it, and also it's not for new manufactured housing uh, or mobile home as far as it's an existing property with the land attached to it okay um, so have a few of those communities in martin county that i know of that 
have available properties in them. So oh, that are not on leased. Land? Correct. You really? Own, you own the lot. Yes. So if anybody's interested yeah. in that, wow. you know, okay. keep that in mind. Yes. Yeah. But uh, check out these ladies here that can help you out with that, with the manufacturer mobile home housing. And, and it's um, with rising housing prices, you know, it's it puts more uh, homes at play with this program. It's uh, been taken off since we've uh, initiated it. That's Mark, excellent. you're doing such a wonderful job and we really appreciate your time. Um, I want to make sure that we give that information for the um, the program that will be helping people who have been impacted from COVID as far as their mortgages are concerned. That number is 833-987-8997, or you can go online to floridajobs.org forward slash H-A-F. Is that correct? Correct. And that stands for Homeowner Assistance Fund. Okay. Right. And that's going to be handled and, by the Department of Economic Opportunity. Right. And before we let you go, can you give your contact information one more time, please, Mark? Yes, ma'am. So the main number to Florida Housing is 850-488-4197. My extension is 1240. And I'm the only market Florida Housing, so you won't get connected to the wrong person. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. Have a wonderful week. And we really appreciate all of your information. Absolutely. Appreciate coming on board. And you guys have, stay safe and everybody have a great Christmas in July. Oh, you, oh, oh, oh. Time. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Yeah, don't have be a, a stranger, day. buddy. Okay. <laughs> take, take care. Bye-bye. You, you too. What a good guy. Isn't that awesome? wonderful? A good guy. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate he him. He has so much to talk about and to tell you. That's amazing. So much oh, information. Yeah. So many programs out there. It's for I mean from him. So yes. That's fabulous. So we're gonna go fast to try to get few through a few things today. You got plenty um, of time. You got I'm 10 looking, minutes. I'm looking for my my stats that I brought. My goodness, here we go. <laughs> So these are, um, and when Mark says that the market has gone up an average of 15%, remember that's an average of 15%. There are many areas that have gone up a lot more than that. Some areas that have not gone up quite as much. That's why that's the average. But just to give you an example, um, St. Lucie County, these are single family homes and these are statistics from June. So, uh, and it's 2020 as opposed to 2021. So there were 575 single family homes that closed in 20, during June in 2020. And in 2021, there were 723. Whoa. <laughs> with, an, with an increase of over 25%. Lots. Oh Lots. my. Yeah. Their median <laughs> yeah. sale price went from 244.9 in 2020 to 305. Wait a minute. Back June. up. What was that? Yes. 305 is the median sale price for the single family homes in St. Lucie County in June of 2021. Up from 244.9. Wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's 24.5%. It's, amazing. It, it is amazing. That's why it's so difficult out there to find something. Sure. To. Yeah. Right. Oh, Martin County. Goodness. Yep. Martin County, June of 2020, 243 homes sold. And in June of 2021, and I can tell you the reason this number isn't higher is because of low inventory. Yeah. Um, all of the areas that we serve, inventory is in almost all of the areas is under two months. And that's, that's very, very low for our inventory. Normally, for a, in a in a good market, we should have we should have three months at least. So in June of 2020, closed single family homes were 243. And then June of 2021 in Martin County closed single family homes was 275. They're, they're not moving down there. <laughs> well, there aren't that there. They don't exist. Yeah, no, they don't, exist. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, they don't yeah. exist. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the median sale price in June of 2020 in Martin County was four hundred and ten thousand. 
now it's 490,000. That's an increase of almost what? 20%. Yep. Oh, gosh. Yep. Yeah. Holy smokes. Are there and any garages lies, for sale? Yeah, Academy? therein lies the reason why it's becoming so difficult to find affordable yeah. housing. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And why sure. programs like Mark Hayes available are even more important. Yeah. And that vets thing that he's got. Fabulous. Yeah. That's yeah. an excellent program. Yeah. That's amazing. We, years and years and years ago, when we bought our first house in Orlando, we used the veterans program, but our interest rate was 17%. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It was like, holy moly. All right. <laughs> we're, didn't, we were we there. didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, we were there in San Diego yeah. in the Jimmy Carter era. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Oh, boy. Yeah. 1981. We got transferred to Michigan in 1981, and interest rates were so high that we bought a house on a land contract. Wow. So I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's like seller financing. Oh, oh it is wow. seller financing. It is seller. Yes. Yeah. But, wow. but uh, interest rates. And of course, you know, we had good credit, good income because it was a company transfer. My husband had an excellent job with sure. General Motors and still interest rate was 18%. Yeah. So that's why we, that's why we bought a house on a land contract. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We did VA so that we didn't have to have a down payment. <laughs> well, why? You know? hey. So, hey, you got to do what you got to do. No, that's yeah. not right. And, yeah. and we can negotiate that too, because yeah. you can do that with a land contract. So we were able to, cause we had a whole bunch of kids <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did and, and, and the eighth one on the way. That's so, amazing. Yeah, so we needed a big house. That's amazing. The Brady Bunch. Oh. Yours, mine, and ours. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That's amazing. So I know we're getting short on time, but we want to tell you about a few of the homes that are currently available. So Paula, why don't you go ahead and do that? Yes, for sure. We are going to start first down in uh, Southside, Palm City. It's a single family detached home, three bedroom, two bath. 1,444 living square feet, 1,506 total square feet. And this is in an area that has great schools and shopping, and they're asking 350,000 for it. So three bedroom, two bath, fairly average size home, but looks like a pretty one. So give us a call. Palm City. Palm right. City. And then um, we're going to move up a little bit to Port St. Lucie. This house is actually a little larger. It's a four bedroom, three bath home, 2,479 living square feet, and a total of 4,024 square feet. This home, um, they're asking 478,500, and it does have a private pool as well. So, four bedrooms how many bathrooms three bathrooms four bedrooms three bathrooms and a pool and a pool four hundred and seventy eight five but is right. the did you say price. four thousand square feet well that's total a total yeah. square foot yeah. so that's the, yeah. the pool and yeah, well, yeah yeah no, yeah, yeah. Wow. under air is like 24 20 a little under 2500 yeah, right but still that's the big house. decent nice big size house, house. Yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. So if you want some room to spread out in <laughs> that with a pool with a pool yeah okay and then we're going to also we're going to look in port st lucie this is probably what you'd call a starter home or a downsize if you like um it's a two bedroom two bath 954 living square feet 463 total square feet mm -hmm. and they're asking 239.9 it's totally renovated move-in ready with a new kitchen, new bathrooms, floors, and more. Single family. Single family. So if you want something just to bring your bags and move in, you're ready to go, this one would do it for you. So that one, they're asking two thirty nine nine. All right, one more? Yep, we, one okay. more. We have another one in Fort Pierce this time. We've got a three bedroom, two bath home. It has 2,630 living square feet. And the total square footage is 5,705. It does have a private pool and it has six garage spaces. So if you have lots of cars, this might be for you. Um, it has a beautiful man cave, fireplace, formal living room, 
It has just about everything you can think of. They're asking five ninety nine nine for that home. So three bedroom, two bath, total square footage five thousand seven hundred. That's a hundred grand. Garages. Hundred grand for each garage. <laughs> Just and you get the house for and free. And you get the free. house for free. This <laughs> is a great exactly. I like that one. That's it. Free house, free house. Give oh. us a call. We'll be glad to get you in to see that. <laughs> okay, so I thought this was an interesting article, just again, to show you the competitive nature of the housing industry in Florida right now. Florida home, Florida is home to seven out of 10 of the top all cash sales metro areas oh my gosh yes west palm beach 52.6 percent of home purchases this year were paid for with cash oh, gosh. naples 52.5 percent um next one is nassau county on uh, port support st lucie is number five on this list and that is 46.2 percent of the homes sold this year in Port St. Lucie cash. have been purchased with cash. Whoa. Yeah. Right. And the, okay, you just mentioned three areas in Florida. And yep. Nassau County is a suburb of Port St. Lucie. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, it seems like with all the accents of yep. yeah. Jacksonville is on here, Cape Coral, Palm Bay. Yes. Wow. The whole state. Everybody's yeah. coming to Florida. Yeah. Someplace, yep, seven out of ten in the country, yeah, is here in Florida, as Florida's far as the all, as far as the top all cash sales areas. Wow, it's it's just hard to imagine, but um, just a short commute to Nassau. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just just a piece of cake. So, how do we get in touch with you guys? So, what? I was just about to say we are certainly here to help you. Um, we work with buyers and we work with sellers. And uh, the you can reach us at 772-200-5105. Any of the information Mark talked about is available by email through us at mydreamhometeam at yahoo.com. Our website, www.mydreamhomeusa.com. Have a wonderful week, everybody. And let us know if you have any questions. Absolutely. Boy, that Mark piece is amazing. Yes, he is. Florida Housing Finance Corporation. Mm -hmm. Good guy in Tallahassee. Absolutely. Have a good week. You too. You thanks. too. This is WPSL, Fort St. Lucie. WSTU Stewart, your home of my dreams.